First, with the Pledge of Allegiance, please rise. It'll be led by Mr. Bose. To the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call vote, please. Dr. Gase, Dr. McBride, Here. Mr. Widman, Dr. Hoyda, Here. Mr. Perez. Here. All uh, here except for Mr. Widman is absent. And then Ms. Perry, Dr. Uh, or Mr. Widman did contact, I think, the board to say that he had a work conflict and would not be present tonight. Thank you. Everyone has a copy of the agenda. I'd like a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. We have a motion by McBride. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? I mean, votes? I'll call the roll, please. Dr. McBride? Yes. Dr. Hoyda? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Item number three, interim superintendent's reports and recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Perez. I have one item. Um, first reading of the staff handbooks for your consideration. Um, when you look through the handbooks for the staff, there are minimal changes. Um, in those mostly cosmetic in nature. Um, and those will be up for a second reading at the regular meeting, meeting here in May. Um, and then if I can go on, are there any questions about the handbook? All right, uh, if I may, uh, Mr. Perez, go on to the Director of Operations Report. Scotty's not here tonight. Yes, sir, please go ahead. All right, the two items that Scotty had was the uh, farm lease, uh, which he took bids. I believe there are four bids. Uh, we accepted the high bid of $226.50 per acre. Uh, that went to Dylan and Gerald Smith, and that is on uh, the board agenda for your consideration and approval tonight. And then also the stadium repair bid. Uh, that was uh, accepted by Garmin Miller for $92,050. And again, that is on the agenda, agenda tonight for your consideration and approval as well. Any questions? And then Mr. Bose, item five, opportunity for the public to address the board. Can we verify that we actually are live today? Yes, we are live. Okay. And so how are we addressing that today? Uh, Mr. Weber asked them to raise their hand and he would let the, allow them to speak through the Zoom program. Hey, okay, Mr. Weber, can you let me know if anyone has raised their hand and let them in in the order that you wish? Yes, uh, we have Carissa Allen that would like to talk. Uh, go ahead and talk, uh, Carissa Allen. Hi, Carissa Allen, 135 Clinton Avenue. Um, I just wanted to say that I appreciate you um, <clears throat> redoing this meeting so that the public has a chance to be able to witness it live. And I also just hope that we can start to be a little more civil in these meetings. Um, I was a little disappointed at uh, just in the last several meetings, um, some of the comments and actions that have been happening I just don't think that that's how uh, five professional people should be acting in a public meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Mr. Weber, any additional comments? No, not at this time. And for the record, I would point out that she was correct. We are redoing the agenda items from the previous meeting that was not broadcast due to technical issues. So we're proceeding in this manner so that everyone does have an opportunity to participate in the meeting. I, 
I just tossed uh, Carissa uh, Allen did have her hand back up. If she would like to talk again, she's welcome to. I don't see any objection to it. Okay, she just took her hand down. We don't have anyone else at this moment that I can see that would like to talk, so that's it. Thank you. Now we proceed to item number six, the consent agenda. You've reviewed it, it includes the minutes and other items. Do you guys want me to list each one of those out? Okay, 6.01, approve the minutes from the March board meeting. 6.02, approve the treasurer's reports for March. 6.03, employment, which includes um, accept the following retirement, and that's in support staff, and then in professional staff for the 2020-2021 school year. Those are one-year limited contracts and home instruction is needed. And another one-year limited title funded contract category as well. Keep going. Contingent limited contracts, support staff for the 2021 school year, continuing contract amendments, summer sweepers as needed, first two year contracts. Those are all listed. Continuing contracts that follow. And it's the interim superintendent then also recommends the non-renewals of the following listed for other instruction. Pupil activity limited contracts pursuant to ORC 3319083. donations and grants. There's donations to the district, Columbian and Washington. And that would be it for the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. And is there a second? Second. Okay. All in favor then of the roll call vote on the consent agenda? Dr. McBride? Yes. Dr. Hoida? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Next, we turn to the action items, 7.01. Approve the Tiffin Columbian graduating class of 2020. Do I have a motion again to do that? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Dr. Hoida? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. 7.02, award the contract for stadium repair to Quality Masonry Company. And as uh, the interim superintendent pointed out, this is something that Mr. Daniel recommended, and this is on the new football field, correct? This is for the stadium steps. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Vote, please. Dr. Hoida? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. Mr. Perez? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Perez? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Dr. Hoida? Yes. 
item 7.04, and that was authorizing the objection to valuation compliant. It identifies the property number on there. Do I have a motion? I will make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Questions? President Perez, who seconded that? Huh? And who seconded that? Oh, Dr. Hoyda. Thank you. Mr. Perez. Yes. Dr. Hoyda. Yes. Dr. Gase. No. Dr. McBride. Yes. Seven point oh five approve the farm lease as recommended. Now the light lease agreement was attached to all our exhibits. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Okay, roll call vote, please. Dr. McBride? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Dr. Hoida? Yes. 7.06, approve the second amended and restated athletic services agreement as exhibited on pages 48 and 54 of our exhibits. And that would be between uh, the athletic service agreement with Mercy Health Tiffin Hospital. Is there a motion? So moved. I'll second it. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Dr. McBride? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Dr. Gase? Abstain. Dr. Hoida? Yes. 7.07, .07. approve the jobs for the future agreement as exhibited on pages 55 through 60. Is there a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, can I have a vote, please? Dr. Gase? Yes. Dr. Hoida? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. 7.08, approve the NOA SCC services agreement. That's for services from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2023, as exhibited on pages 61 through 65 of our exhibits. Is there a motion? So moved. McBride moves. Is there a second? I will second it. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Dr. McBride? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Dr. Hoida? Yes. Seven point oh nine approved school nurses agreement. And that's with Mercy Hospital, Mercy Health, Tiffin, and Willard Hospitals for the nurse services as outlined in the exhibit. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. McBride. Any discussion? Vote please. Mr. Perez? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. Dr. Gase? Abstain. Dr. Hoida? Yes. 7.10, withdraw the complaint against the valuation of the real property. Again, for those item, the identified property through the tax numbers. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Dr. McBride. Any discussion? Yeah, no. Is this, this is the Bow Rights property. Property is okay. Correct. I kind of mistaken the other one. Any further discussion? 
vote, please. Mr. Perez? Yes. Dr. McBride? Yes. Dr. Gase? No. Dr. Hoida? Yes. And then turning to 7.11, adopt the 2019 to 2020 distance learning resolution. Thank you, Interim Superintendent, on this. And do we have a motion to adopt it? I will move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? The discussion I have for you, Interim Superintendent, if we have to go virtual next year, will this suffice or do you think we'll have to amend it again? I'm sorry, say that again, Mr. Perez. If we have to go virtual for any part of next school year, will we have to adopt another resolution like this or will this cover us along with our other policy? No, a, a resolution like this, Mr. Perez, is usually done in August, but under the, cir the circumstances that we, we had uh, with COVID hitting in February, um, we were permitted by state legislature to go back and to adopt a resolution to permit our distance learning. Um, so this will need to be reapproved uh, or some form of distant learning resolution will need to be reapproved in, in August. Any need for any further discussion? Vote, please. Mr. Perez. Yes. Dr. McBride. Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Dr. Hoida? Yes. Item eight, opportunity for the public to dialogue with the board. Mr. Weber, can you let us know if anybody wants to dialogue with the board? I, this is an opportunity anyone who would like to speak to the board, please raise your hand. We have 13 attendees and no one has raised their hand at this moment. There's nobody? Okay, so at this point, we'll move to item number nine, board discussion. And the topic that's identified is superintendent search. However, the board can, I think at this point, can discuss several topics if it wants. So go ahead. Is that better? All right, so we'll enter into the board discussion then. And I'd ask at this point, you guys are all sitting here, but if you wish to speak, just raise your hand so that I could recognize you. And we can all just take turns. Who wants to go first? Dr. McBride? Yeah, I have a, a few things I'd like to bring forward. So one piece that was brought forward, um, a citizen reached out with an issue that I believe we need to discuss, perhaps refer to counsel. Um, so I'm unclear if we have a conflict, if the vendor who is helping us with the selection of an interim makes a recommendation. So a citizen reached out with that concern. So I feel like that's something we should either discuss or ask counsel about. Ms. Brown, did you want to comment on that or? Um, uh, just to clarify, it, it's the entity assisting with the search has made a recommendation or might make a recommendation and the question is whether or not that's appropriate? Correct. Um, uh, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be uh, appropriate. Obviously the board has to make its own decision um, and the board has to have sufficient facts and information on which to make that decision. So. Um, I would say for your, whatever entity is assisting you for them to make a recommendation wouldn't be prohibited, but I wouldn't want that entity to rule out anybody without you all making that decision. Hey, Dr. McBride, do you have anything further then? Yeah, my next piece that I'd like to ask about is I'd like to as we move forward, consider the creation of a superintendent selection committee that includes members of the public as well as our own staff to assist um, us by participating in candidate reviews and vetting and making sure that we have public opinion and making a recommendation. You can bring your volume. Okay. Before I speak, any other board member want to be heard first? So I'm just trying to clarify something. Um, 
are you making these questions regarding what has been the apparently the ongoing search for an interim superintendent or the now posted search for the permanent superintendent? So the superintendent selection committee I'd like to be for the, the full superintendent. The permanent one then, correct? So board members, um, any thoughts from you fellow members in terms of making, creating a committee that also includes members of the community to participate? And I would envision that it would include them participating but not having a say in who the, the candidates ultimately are. That's, that's up to the board to do, but they could help and give input. Um, I think that was one of the presentations that we saw from two of the vendors before is that they would either survey the administrators, the public to get what they were looking for. The other alternative is we can create a committee and include a representative from those fields. Um, and again, but I would make it clear that my position would be, and it's only mine, that while they would be involved in gathering facts or directing our needs, they wouldn't make that decision. So they wouldn't have a vote on who the candidates would ultimately be. Are there any thoughts? I think it's understandable that they wouldn't have a, a vote because that, that rests on the board's shoulders. However, I do think that we need to be including multiples of entities in the, the vetting and the interviewing process, getting opinions, and that includes members of the public and members of our staff. I think that if we did that though, then you'd want to limit, it would be the entire board that you would see and members of the community or just a subcommittee of the board working with those community members and then ultimately screening the candidates and turning it over to the full board. And then the full board then would make that decision based, you know, on the, I don't, I don't know if that's what you're envisioning. That's what I'd like to discuss. And I hate to pick on Ms. Brown again, but um, I think you've had some experience in this. What, what could the board do? I mean, we could form a subcommittee. We could also involve the public. Um, any thoughts? Uh, you can you can do any of those things. It's not unusual to involve the community in um, meeting with candidates, providing feedback on what they're looking for in the next superintendent providing feedback on particular um, candidates. Ultimately, obviously, the board has to make the determination. They can't, you can't uh, defer or, de or delegate that, that obligation to anybody else. Um, but, but taking feedback from the community is perfectly appropriate. Having them meet uh, and engage with potential candidates is also acceptable. Uh, subcommittees, fine. Um, the full committee meeting with them can do so uh, as long as you call proper meeting to do that. Uh, board members, any thoughts on that? Anyone interested in that? Dr. Hoyda? I'm fine with that. Dr. Gase? That is not really the meeting. I mean, I think that the posting is supposed to end on Friday, correct? So, um, Ms. Brown, would the board have to vote to form this committee? And then who would uh, appoint the, the community members or how would they get on it? I think under the articles that I read governing our board, I make appointments, but what, what's, would we need a board action to ratify the committee's creation and set a term of duration for it? So I think the, the board as a whole could decide that they want to uh, form a committee that includes members of the community, other stakeholders. Um, you're right, the board president typically appoints subcommittees of the board, not necessarily who from the, from the community may, on, may be on that committee. You can decide how you want that selected as a board. Okay, board, do you want to do this as a subcommittee or do you want to do this all as a board and we would solicit people who want to get in from different groups and we could meet next Tuesday and go over those and try to form that committee as a board and do it all as a committee, basically as the entire board or would you prefer doing it as a committee? The committee is fine. 
Dr. Hoyda? Well, I think, I think the first thing we need to do is extend our deadline for applications. Okay. I think that uh, with talking with Dr. Lahofsky, he, he thought that the keeping the deadline, opening the deadline up, extending it, he just took that as an arbitrary date. He said, he said it would be no problem to extend that. And I think that's what we should do is extend it so we get the proper candidate either to apply or select. So I don't see why we wouldn't extend that until maybe the end of August, or maybe September. Then the time frame would be in October to interviews and November possibly and have someone selected possibly by the end of the calendar year to take over in the following year. That would give us plenty of time because then the first round, if we're not happy, with our candidate pool the first time, we can go address it again, and that still gives us time to announce by spring at the latest. Yeah, obviously I'm not against this getting it done earlier, but I don't want to rush in and preclude anyone who might want to do, want to do the job for us. Dr. Gase? I agree with Jeff. Okay, so it's all right, Dr. McBride. Dr. Hoyda, one of your issues, what is the date that you're foreseeing as the start date for the new superintendent would be? I, I didn't hear your question. But what would the start date be in your mind for the new superintendent? Are, are the new superintendent, don't we go, are, isn't it an August 1st start date? So it'd be August, the, per, the permanent position would be 8-1-21. So you would, 8-1-21. Right, that would be the start date for the permanent position. The, I would recommend, and I can talk with Dr. Lahosky if you'd like, but I would recommend that we would close applications, say September 30th of this year. Interview and meet with everyone in October, because that, that way the school year will be starting, and then maybe make decisions in November, and if there's one applicant that we want to offer the position to make the offering in December. And if after the first round, we know there's no one, we can then make the offer in January, February. It still gives us time to continue our school year with our interim and bring the permanent on or have the interim continue as the permanent. Any thoughts, Dr. McBride? I concur. You concur. Um, personally, I'd like us to see try to get a permanent now to start August. We're in a crisis mode, but if we're not starting in August, then I think we would have to push it back because it wouldn't, you know, and then I guess you're right. We would push it back till next year because it wouldn't be fair to start somebody probably in January or, I mean, but we, what I want to see is somebody here to get us to transition into a very difficult situation that we may be looking at either a hybrid system, a regular system, or a completely virtual system online again. And so. So Victor, that's the interim. So we're talking, there's the interim and then there's the, the permanent position. Correct. So the interim would be here for a year and be responsible for that, steering the direction of the district in terms of our budget issues, um, having to deal with the collective bargaining agreement or the alternative is we can see who gets in by the 22nd or extend it another week and see if we can get a permanent so I, I'm just one member, but it sounds to me like the consensus of the board is the board would rather wait till next year to make the permanent decision and go with an interim in the meantime. So in, in that case, what do we do with the posting that already exists other than the, I mean, extend it for how long? Do you foresee Dr. I, I, I think why not extend it until the end of September? I think that I thought that's what you were discussing. So we're we're working on finding an interim currently to serve for the year to get us through the transition of whatever this looks like in the next year. And then what, what Jeff is talking about is extending that that posting through the summer until August or September. We can put the committee together and then we start 
interviewing. Jeff, do I understand? That is exactly right. And so in that regard, would the board object? I guess Dr. Hoyda and Dr. McBride, you guys have been doing some of the lifting so far, continuing as a subcommittee just to establish the process on the permanent search. But once it gets to the situation that we're actually appointing committee members and stuff like that, it would be the entire board at that point. Would you guys feel comfortable doing that? I'm very fine with doing that, but I would like it to be clear whose roles are what and what if Jeff and I are doing that, what we're doing versus what other members of the board are doing so that the roles are clearly delineated. Okay, so, and Ms. Brown, if I can call on you again, um, we posted the position for superintendent permanently. Did we have to have a board motion for that? Um, not a motion necessarily for the for the posting um, or really for the agreement. You you need a superintendent. You only have an interim now, so it's appropriate that you post for a superintendent. Um, I, did you post for a permanent one or an interim one at this point? I think we posted just for the permanent and then we use basically an in-house search for the interim. So what is it you're looking to do now? Are you looking for another posting or you're just going to extend the posting you currently have? I believe you would just extend the current one that we have to a certain date, probably two weeks out or you said September, correct? Dr. Hoyda would be your preference? Yes, the, the posting for the permanent, I think, didn't you say expired Friday? Expired Friday? Second. We, we should just extend the posting for the permanent until September 30th. Well, September 30th. So we wouldn't need a board action on that, correct? Correct. All right, then let's just extend that, see what feedback we get, and then we report back as a board and see when we will actually want to form the committee with the public or what process we want to take. Is that fair? Okay. Any other issues for board discussion? I, I kind of, for board discussion, want to highlight certain things. I kind of mentioned this already that I've kind of been talking to Mr. Bose, but realistically, I want to see our district come up with three plans. One, to allow for our attendance in the regular fashion. Two, a hybrid plan. I don't know what that's going to be. The governor has talked about two plus two. I don't know if that's feasible in our district. And three, if we have to go virtual again, um, I would tell you that what happened in spring, I commend the teachers, but it's not gonna probably meet with the requirements for next year. Um, we have K through five kids that probably need a lot more actual education or um, um, teaching hands-on. And it's been very difficult to do on the internet option. Um, I don't believe parents will be happy with attendance daily and about 30 minutes of assignments. Um, I think that it depends on the kids' ages. We've had different success in terms of what children are getting. We're going to have to get something more standardized and we're going to have to be ready to go. I believe that the state's going to put the burden on us to come up with the plans and to have those evaluated. Um, there's guidelines from the CDC. There's guidelines from the state that were leaked out. But we're going to have to seriously look at either purchasing a lot of items, protective gear, thermometers or heat sensing devices for our buildings, and a lot of technical stuff. And I think I did just mentioned to Mr. Weber, I don't know if we're going to need more tech people, production people, or if we can enter into sharing agreements to produce virtual online content for our students. But we have to be ready to go. And on top of this, I emailed you all to let you know that the governor in balancing his budget for this year, it cut $449,006, which I've now learned is $7, actually, correct? So, and we're gonna get hit even worse for next year on the second year of this biennium. Um, we're looking at a serious financial situation on top of the fact that we have to adapt to the school and on top of the fact that we have to finish our uh, collective bargaining agreement. 
And so um, other issues that are coming up is I didn't circulate with everyone, but I'll email it out. We still have our bond issue that failed and we haven't discussed it, but the board is going to have to decide what to do with it. Um, if we want to come back with it, I believe our deadline, and this is just me reading it from our Brickler report, and it could be, I might be re misinterpreting it, but it would be July 6th. That would give us one month to decide what we want to do. I contacted Mr. Coleman and told him to send Mr. Bowes his contract if we want to continue that in terms of their architect services. That's another decision we have to make. Um, but if not, then we won't be going to levy on that till next year. The reason I bring that up is because I think that previously I've talked about having to do an operating levy and hoping to do it in 2021, 2022. I think with these budget cuts that we're gonna see at the state level, I think it's gonna accelerate our timelines. And so I think we seriously have to weigh what's more important to our district, our operating revenue or this building in speaking briefly to Mr. Coleman, he indicated that the state is reappraising its, its numbers. If we were to pass in November, we'd get our same allocation that we got before, but he anticipated, and he was just guessing at this point, that if we wait till next year, we're looking at probably a 15% reduction against us. So that's, that's the reality there. But I, I need that to be something that the board starts thinking about and that the public starts to understand. Um, this is a crisis we didn't create, and now we're having to respond, and it's hitting everyone across the state, and it's hitting local governments, and it's gonna be difficult, but we're gonna have to deal with these issues. So I'm just reporting that out to everyone here on the, on the board. If there's any questions. Hey, Victor, can we separate those? So that there, there was two separate pieces there. We have the, the piece about making plans for how we move forward in the fall and so yes. that that that's one piece and then we have uh, the the buildings piece can we kind of break those out to have the, those two separate discussions okay w with the plan what i'd want to see and that depends on what we do tonight and next week if we do go with an interim that's kind of why we need someone in um i wanted to start meeting as a, either as a board or i could meet with the administration weekly as basically a crisis team to see where we are and we're developing this plan or along with any other board member who wants. Um, it's gonna require the union, it's gonna require staff, it's gonna require parents too to understand that they're being involved in this planning space for what we're doing. Um, I already had Mr. Daniel already started looking into some questions that I submitted to Mr. Bose and some of the math wasn't very good if we try doing these shifts. The reality is I don't know what we can accommodate. Um, so. That could be one thing I want to respond with that with just either basically forming a crisis team with the school to report daily to the public to let them know what we're doing. I know the public wants to start school in August, but we have to be realistic and plan for the worst case scenarios. We've already had it. So um, we can't come back to the public and say we didn't see this coming. And then to your other issue, the building, we've got a regular meeting next week. We have a meeting in June. You, the board can let me know when we want to put that on an agenda. If anybody wants to move for that, <coughs> we want to set up a different meeting to discuss this and who they would want involved in it. We haven't really involved the public in, at this point, and I think that's critical. I don't know how much public input we're going to get in like a month to go forward with something like this. So. Any other thoughts on what Dr. McBride said on that? Any preferences to when you would want to see this on the agenda or should I just wait for a board member to request it to be put on the agenda? But can I put don't- both, Can you put both on the agenda for, for next week? I think they both need to be discussed. Okay. And is that for discussion or you want them on for voting? I don't think we can, we don't have anything to vote on yet. Okay. So put them on for discussion for next month or next week? Next week. Okay. And is there anyone that you would want at this meeting to answer any questions in particular from the administration? The only person that, that might be of interest, at least for the, the planning 
would be Beth, but she's been, you've been working with, with Beth <laughs> regularly, yeah, Beth Schwartz, yeah, so I, I believe that y'all, you meet with the other superintendents and the other, and with Beth weekly, if not more than that, correct? We, we, we just started up the area superintendents meetings this week again. Uh, we wanted to get through graduation. Um, so we, we talked briefly on Monday about different possibilities and scenarios. And um, I, I agree, even though there's a lot of unknowns right now, um, we need to be ready with, with some options. Um, so we will continue, the, the area superintendents will continue to meet. Um, and uh, Beth is always available. She's, she's been very good over the last several weeks about answering questions and being available. Uh, I'm sure if we asked her to be available, she, she would do that. Um, and and I, can, I can invite her if you'd like, maybe to, to get some foresight as to what may or may not be coming down the road in terms of guidelines and what may or may not be permitted come August. And do schools have to submit the, the reopen plan the same way that universities do? I have not heard that yet. I'm sure they will, yes. Dr. Hoyda, any thoughts? No, not really. Dr. Case? No. I believe that unless anybody wants to add anything else, that would um, address our board discussion. And at this point, I would ask for a motion to go into executive session and discuss personnel, the uh, hiring of an employee, which is identified as the interim superintendent. And do I have a motion to that effect? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Dr. McBride? Yes. Dr. Hoida? Yes. Dr. Gase? Yes. Mr. Perez? Yes, and my understanding is there's two candidates tonight, Dr. Hoida? I'm sorry? Two candidates tonight? Yes, two. And Dr. Hoida, no action afterwards, correct? You want that to- That is correct. All right, so there, there's no anticipated action afterwards. At this point, we would adjourn and do executive session, correct? And the meeting? Huh? And the meeting? Yes.